We are gathered here this day in this beloved sanctuary as family and friends because of the death of our sister in Christ, Sarah Nell Ashworth Levan. We are here to seek God's comfort, to witness to the truth of Jesus's resurrection and its claim and power upon our lives and to proclaim that in life and death, we belong to God. Hear and take comfort now in these words from scripture. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. Because I live, you also will live. Please pray with me. We pray to the one triune God this day, to the father who lost a son, to the Christ who suffered and tasted death so that we may have life in all of its abundance, to the Holy Spirit who reaches out to us in the very depths of our grief. Grant us your peace this day, O God, as we come to give thanks for the life of your servant, Sarah. We know that for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. By the power of your spirit, reach us this day. Speak to us through the gift of your holy word that we may receive the hope and comfort you so graciously offer. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Hello. This is for you, Sana. Out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of memories. Memories painted in Camp Merrimack colors. One memory, a camp song, I dedicate today to you, Sana. We're campers forever. We may grow old, dear, but spirit like ours will not grow old, dear. We're campers forever, forever and a day. You died. A friend called. Suddenly I could hear again hoof prints of a thousand things that we shared. Seven decades and one year. Seventy-one years we were friends. It was the opening day of Camp Mary Mac. Hello, I'm Sana. I'm Mamie D. Come on, Mamie D. Let's go to that old tree, the one by the riding ring. Okay, Sana, let's go and let's climb in it. And we did, we climbed. We climbed to the first limb on the left of the first fork. We climbed that day and in many times after. It became our go-to place. And we became special, you became a special go-to friend. Sana, I don't know what happens when we die, but I'm right behind you. And I'll bring the wine. Nothing left to do but dance. Hey everyone, um, we are Kate and Sarah. We are two of Sarah's grandchildren. And this is a poem that really reminds us of her. Um, it is Where Everything is Music by Rumi. Don't worry about saving these songs. And if one of our instruments breaks, it doesn't matter. We have fallen into the place where everything is music. The strumming and the flute notes rise into the atmosphere. And even if the whole world's harp should burn up, there will still be hidden instruments playing. So the candle flickers and goes out. We have a piece of flint and a spark. This singing art is seafoam. The graceful movements come from a pearl somewhere on the ocean floor. Poems reach up like spindrift and the edge of driftwood along the beach, wanting. They derive from a slow and powerful root that we cannot see. Stop the words now, open the window in the center of your chest, and let the spirits fly in and out.
Before we turn to scripture this day, I do encourage you to take the card which is in your pew um, and to leave it for the family. Um, Share a memory of something about Sarah uh, to be left with them um, and leave it in your pew and and we will make sure the family gets it after the service. Thank you. Let us now turn to scripture as we seek to remember the promises that God has made to us through the death and the resurrection of his son and our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this God's holy word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a high Christology and a strong sense of sovereignty in the Gospel of John that you will not find anywhere else in the Bible. The narratives are poetic. They are poetic for a Gentile audience as to bring meaning and understanding. In the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, Jesus shows up as a little baby boy in Bethlehem. And in the Gospel of Mark, he just walks out of Galilee at the ripe old age of the early 30s. But in the Gospel of John, the writer decides to talk about Jesus not at his birth, But as the old saying goes, when he was just a twinkle in the eyes of Mary, and even farther back to when there was absolutely nothing but that little twinkle of light that we all came from, that even the dark nothingness failed to extinguish. And the funeral customs of our ancestors, the Celts, they would put these types of lights and candles in their windows to guide the dead back to their homes. We have long associated light with life and shadows with death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, so the famous psalm goes. But Sarah? Sarah used the shadows for something else. She used them in her paintings to highlight and to accentuate the light. And she shared these paintings with all of us. I remember the very first time I walked into her room at Highland Farms six years ago. Her walls were covered with pieces of her art. And having Recently recovered from a stroke, she simply watched as I walked around her room, taking in the various hues. And when my eyes settled on a vista that was different from all the others on the wall, it was one cast with more neutrals, grays, tans, and blues. She delighted in gifting it to me. She was so very generous that way. So today we are here to celebrate and honor the light that was Sarah's life. The light of love was that little girl who first began her love affair with the Swannanoa Valley as she traveled on that long, exhausting trip all the way from Shreveport, Louisiana to attend Camp Mary Mac here in the summers. The charismatic poet Edna St. Vincent Millay in her poem, God's World, wrote these words. O world, 
I cannot hold these thee close enough. Thy winds, thy wide gray skies, thy mists that roll and rise, thy woods this autumn day that ache and sag, and all but cry with color, that gaunt crag to crushed, to lift the lean of that black bluff. World, world, I cannot get thee close enough. Sarah saw the world this way. I cannot hold thee close enough. And as she developed her talent as a watercolorist, the varied use of light and shade found its way on her canvases. For Sarah, it was a way of holding the beauty the shadows, the light, all of these images as closely as she could. She saw the world that God loved so much, and she loved it back fiercely, and she gave her talent away. This love story of God's love for the world was a story of love that begins well in the darkness. The darkness of a womb and expectant parents. But even further back into the darkness of the world where God out of love began blowing things into existence over millions of years. Including us. Including Sarah. And that God who loved Sarah into being through the love of her devoted parents. That God who watched Sarah fall in love first with the culture and the vibrancy of the music, food, and sights of Louisiana and these mountains as a child. And that God that shepherded her in that first meeting when she met the love of her life in Jerry. Their children and the good gifts they handed down together in love. And that God that brought her home, ultimately, this town of Black Mountain where she settled in the final vibrant years of her life. That God received Sarah back into the divine arms. Even in death, the light still shines. The light of Sarah's life. The light of the promises of a God who, knowing that death is the way of creation, became flesh and dwelt amongst us, so that no matter if we live or if we die, there is no place that we can be or go where God hasn't been. And that promise, that is a light that shines even in the darkness of stroke-ridden bodies and loss, and even just plain old grief that we sometimes feel when we lose the brightness of one who embodied so much love as Sarah. Because that promise says to us unequivocally that Sarah lives on in the memories that we have of her and the beautiful paintings she has graced us with throughout our lives and most importantly, it lives on in her love. And that quality, that light, that love never extinguishes. And in the moment after her last breath, as her children watched from the window outside of her room saying goodbye through the phone, I can only imagine the same light that she experienced the beginning of something new, a new existence with the God who never lets the lights go out, seeing things in a whole new way, a vista of color, but also through the end of something that had been so beautiful, breathtakingly beautiful. So John's playful use of light in his gospel, in the opening chapter there, was a delight to Sarah herself. 
and one that she emulated throughout her entire life. My friends, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not, will not, cannot ever overcome it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let us stand in response to the word this day and join our voices together in our affirmation of faith from the PCUSA Brief Statement of Faith. In life and in death, we belong to God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Please pray with me. Eternal God, source, guide, and goal of all that is, from you we receive life as a gift, and to you our life returns. We find our comfort in life and in death that we are not our own, but belong to you. A faithful God whose steadfast love embraces us on this fascinating and fragile human pilgrimage. And thus we find it most natural at such a time as this, in such a place as this, to lift up our hearts in praise to you. Good and gracious God, we have gathered this day to give thanks, to remember our mother, grandmother, aunt, and friend, Sarah. We remember the way she was, her love for your church, her absolute joy of painting, her fierce devotion to family and to friends, her playfulness and her calming presence, but mainly the smile and the twinkle in her eyes. Sarah had a presence about her that made us confident that all would be well, not through any one thing she did, but simply because her presence was a solid foundation of kindness and goodness that truly changed our lives and everything for the better how we miss her and her presence in our lives. But filling our grief are so many memories of times and places of moments shared here in Black Mountain and in Louisiana and through the tears we know that there will be laughter as we remember Sarah. May we model and follow Sarah's trust in you, O oh God. For her faith burned brightly in all of our lives. Favorite scripture passages, old hymns, a determination to be here every Sunday that she could. These saturated her soul as life ebbed away and wrapped in a mantle of love, the blessed assurance with which Sarah lived was fully realized even beyond her fullest, fondest, colorful dreams. So we celebrate and we give thanks that Sarah is at home with you and with Jerry once again. Gracious God, we are grateful above all that the end is not broken health and dreams unfulfilled, swallowed up in death but rather the confidence that to live is to live unto the Lord, 
and to die is to die unto the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are indeed the Lord's. Receive our thanksgiving, O God, our gratitude this day for such a beautiful spirit-filled life. Grant us, her family and beloved friends, the comfort of your spirit. Renew our hope and lead us on in the confidence that nothing can ever separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On behalf of the family, I want to thank all of you for being here, everyone who's involved in the service and all the guests, especially those who have come from out of state. Uh, we're pleased to have my mother's best friend in life, Jan Barlow, and her daughter, Nell, with us from Shreveport, Louisiana, who drove up here. 
Uh, we're really thrilled to have you with us. Mamie, thank you so much for the beautiful words. It, it was terrific. And uh, uh, relatives, Duncan Ashworth, uh, mom's uh, nephew in from Austin, Texas, and all of you, it's just really good to be around family and friends at this time for us. And um, uh, Liz and Martha and I all really appreciate you showing up today. It's a difficult time. It's been nine months separated for us to do this, but we were so thankful we could do this now. And uh, it's really difficult when someone says, think about a few things to say about your mother of 60 years, right? So uh, um, I, just, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to tell one story and end with a quotation that I think pretty much sums it up. Um, and, then, and then Liz and Martha will say uh, a few words. The, we were in the summer, and I'm going to get the date wrong, it doesn't matter. I was about 16, Liz was 18, and Martha was probably about nine years old. And we were over in Spain and Portugal for an extended period of time. And um, we were being irascible, very tired, probably jet lagged teenagers and, and youngster. And uh, we, were, we were in a tour group and something happened or we were chatting or fighting or doing whatever we were doing. And we got separated from the tour group. And as anyone who's been around mom or me or my cousin Duncan knows, uh, sense of direction is not one of those traits that we really have. <laughs> So we got really, really lost. And all of a sudden, Martha and I and Liz all started saying, Mom, where are we? Mom, where are we? Where are we? And we were just scared. And Mother turned around and looked at us all with the grin that you all know. And she said, we're right here. <laughs> and that, that, is, that is my mother to a T. And she was one of the most centered people in the moment, not in the past, not in the future. Mother was right here with you. And what mother's strength to me as a human being and all the trials and tribulations and wonderful things that have happened to all of us is she always felt it was important, not necessarily to say anything, but just to be there. And mom was there for people. So I want to end my little comments with a quote that I'm going to paraphrase uh, from James Joyce out of Finnegan's Wake where he says, she lived, she loved, she laughed, and she left. But the beautiful thing about my mom is we have a lot of pieces left hanging on the walls. And she doesn't go away. Hi, I'm Martha LeVan, and also wanted to extend my incredible gratitude for everybody who is with us here in person today and who may be watching at home. Thank you with all of our hearts. Um, this is a very small snippet from a children's book actually called Frederick um, by Leo Leone. Um, It has beautiful illustrations. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it's all paper cutouts, and it's about a, a family of mice. <laughs> I can't. Um. And take a deep breath. And she's here. Okay. Frederick, why don't you work? They asked. I do work, said Frederick. I gather sun rays for the cold, dark days. I gather colors for winter is gray. Close your eyes, said Frederick. I always send you the rays of the sun. Do you feel their golden glow? And as Frederick spoke of the sun, the four little field mice began to feel warmer. And when he told them 
of the blue periwinkles, the red poppies and the yellow wheat and the green leaves of the berry bush. They saw the colors as clearly as if they had been painted in their minds. Thanks. And I'm Liz LeVan Riley. Um, I'll just echo our, echo our family thanks. Um, I think most of you who knew our mom at any stage thought of her with a paintbrush in her hand at some point. Um, and it's hard to believe, but she also wrote. So she, um, one of the things that Martha found, it was really treasures uh, from going through some of her things is, is just an incredible amount of writing of short pieces, poems, all kinds of things. So I will end for us today some of Sarah LeVan's words on joy, which I really don't need my reading glasses because she wrote so big by this point. <laughs> so I'll give it a shot without the reading glasses. Sarah said, joy is truly ecstatic, always moving us away from the house of fear into the house of love and always proclaiming that death no longer has the final say. Though its noise remains loud and its devastation visible, the joy of Jesus lifts up life to be celebrated. And thank you for celebrating with us today. Friends, as we go out into the world this day, hear these words once again. The light shines in the darkness, and the light does not, did not, shall not, will not, ever, ever. The darkness will never overcome the light. And so as you go this day, may the blessings of Almighty God descend upon you and dwell in your hearts forever, forever, so that you may be a blessing to all you meet as Sarah was a blessing to us.